Hey y'all, this is the second part of the lesson for numeracy skills. And today we're gonna dive into practicing estimation and reading graphs. Estimation is probably a life skill that you're gonna find pretty valuable as you navigate life, but um, estimation is something that you can use at the grocery store or while shop shopping elsewhere or um, doing large projects, planning events, anything like that, you can kind of estimate and get an idea of what you'll need. Uh, this first example here, it says a plastic sheet designed to hold DVDs will hold up to six DVDs on each page. How many pages are needed for 52 DVDs? Now you might think, well, I'll just take 52 and divide it by six, but it doesn't divide evenly. So you can kind of get a roundabout idea if you just kind of, you know, either round up after you divide or um, you can take multiplication and look at it that way. So I know that if it were 54, it would divide evenly. So I'm going to go around there. I'm going to do six times um, eight pages is going to be 48 DVDs. So if I bought only eight pages, I'm not going to have enough. But if I bought nine pages or sheets, I think I should say sheets, then that's 54 DVDs. And that would give me two open spaces, which would be the better option. You wanna go over in this case. So um, you would need, oh my goodness, nine pages in order to have enough. So I want you to pause the video and try these next two on your own and then come back and check your work. On both of these examples, you can use division to get you closer to the answer and then kind of try some numbers around there to see which ones work. Um, you can see in the second example, I was a little, I started way low, so I had to try it a couple times, but um, that's okay. So in the second one, the gardener wants to grow 900 daisies. Each bag of Mir miracle Grow dirt will supply 32 plants. So how many bags does he need to buy in order to cover all the plants? So I did 32 times 28, which was too low. And then the 32 times 29, which was over. And that's ideal because we don't want to have not enough again. And then the last scenario is teachers and students in classrooms. And you're trying to figure out how many classrooms are needed and um, only 25 students are allowed in each classroom. So you just start multiplying. Um, you end up at 23 classrooms are needed um, to cover all of the students. If we went 22, then we would have to jam pack one classroom um, more than we're allowed. So that's estimation. Let's go on to graphs, reading graphs. When reading a circle or a pie graph, each section will have a percentage associated with it. If you know the total number of people or observations or whatever's being studied, then you can use the percentage to find out how many observations are in each section. So if you have the percentages and you have the total, then you can figure out some more information. And then um, some key things to know about circle graphs or pie graphs. A circle graph, every circle graph should have a percentage that adds up to 100. That's the highest it should go. And then in decimal form, 100 is equivalent to just one. And then when you hear the word of in mathematics, especially when referring to percentages, that means we will multiply. So just a few hints before we get started. I have got a pie chart here of morning sales at a bakery, I guess, donut shop, maybe. And we have percentages for each category. So 36% of the people who came in ordered tea, 38% ordered coffee, and so on. So you get the gist. And then we're going to answer these questions based on that pie chart. What share ordered coffee at the store this morning? We're not saying how many people ordered coffee. We're saying what percentage ordered coffee? And we can see from the pie chart that 38% of the people who entered the store got coffee. What share ordered donuts or pastries? So we look at donuts or pastries 
and that's 15% of the pie chart. If a thousand people came to the store this morning, how many people ordered tea? This is not asking for the percent of people who ordered tea, but how many? So if we look at the pie chart, we can see that 36% of the people ordered tea. Now listen to my wording there. 36% of the people ordered tea. So 36% in decimal form, of how many people came in ordered tea. That is gonna be 360. And then the last one, if, that's a typo. If a thousand people came to the store, how many people ordered juice? So I want you to try it. For that one, you should get 110 people. You're taking 11% and converting it to decimal. Uh, the way you do that is you just divide it by 100, if you aren't familiar, and multiplying it by 1,000 people. So if we made a little table here, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you could, of all the categories, um, we could list out the number of people who ordered those things, and all of those numbers should add up to 1,000 people. But if we list out the percentages, then those percentages should add up to 100%. So be just watch out for that. And then two other types of graphs that we're going to look at today. One is a bar graph and one is a line graph. A bar graph is used for comparison. And I'm sure you've seen these. They're just literal bars along an axis and they just compare the frequency of some items. And then a line graph shows change over time. And it usually has this little zigzaggy line that goes across the graph with dots on years usually. So an example of each of these, uh, an example of a bar graph, there's lots of uses for a bar graph. Um, one you could do is number of each color in a family size bag of Skittles. You would have all your colors listed out on the axis, and then your bars would go up to the frequency at which each color occurred. So that's a bar graph. And then a line graph, The one of the popular uses of a line graph is like um, birth rates over time or death rates over time. And that's just gonna show you, you know, if it's going, up or down, trending up or down. So that's just some examples of that. Uh, that's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to help. See you in the next one.